in the way. Absolutely marvelous. Now we see the one rifleman team moving in without much to actually help them right in among the grenadiers and pumas. Quite exposed right out in the open. And we have sniper reports going in there. And you can hear going down and the rifleman charging right into these men but taking heavy losses. Managing to suppress these grenadiers, perhaps with a bit of support from the MG nearby, but the rifleman are forced to retreat, rather cancelling out this rather weak attack he had planned out. Not really trying to push with all he has, and another naval weapon barrage going in here. Again, rather keen on stopping any attempts at repairing the bridge. The M10 holding the position, and not much else coming out, no. Additional infantry, only three infantry teams compared with my four infantry teams, all grenadiers. And I've already lost three full grenadier teams. In fact, I've already suffered heavier losses, but at the same time, I've been able to maintain a slightly more stable line and, of course, be a bit more aggressive. In fact, I've been forced to be more aggressive since, of course, he did manage to hold over three victory points and overextend himself in the process. And now a King Tiger from the 503rd Schwerer Panzer Abteilung is being prepared. The King Tiger, Tiger 2 with the Porsche production turret. It was though cancelled since it did have a slight shot trap. And so it was replaced with a slightly more sturdy front which would not deflect the shots right into the tank. Sniper taking out an MG42 gun the MG42 and been there the whole time. Whole time. And finally now being forced to pull back, it certainly would have helped there. But at the same time, I do believe any sort of harassment it stopped there is all worth it. Veteran C3 now up for my armor, meaning armored skirts for my tanks and Stug. And we see the Panzer IV here, ready to stop any sort of counterattack alongside this bunkers. And I'm pretty sure that eventually he will get this bridge repaired and then an attack will come. Anti-tank considering a protection position and we see rangers moving in and this is a bit of a rarity smoke rounds going down Certainly not bad, but perhaps you should have waited to actually move in until they actually had all landed instead of running straight into my men and the Panzer IV, the Panzer IV actually missing with its shot taking a few shots to the rear with the other shots hit and what is this? Nippelwerfer and Howitzerbrise is going in all up Place a lot of smoke, a lot of death, a lot of fire. And we see these mortar teams and MG teams a bit exposed. In fact, the mortar team is right in the fire of the Nebelwerfer. Will it get out of there in time or will it burn to death? Looks like death it is, yes indeed. And again, a slightly flummoxed attack, not really pushing very much behind it. None of those numerous diversion attacks as we saw because he lost most of his energy doing those attacks and has not replaced them. So, further riflemen gearing up with the rangers and some engineers. King Tiger now on the field and there we can see the sort of slope turret and one can also then imagine that right there it would actually pierce right into the f top armor which wasn't very good and mortars get it too easy. I'm not entirely sure what is going on. I'm about again. Let's get to the conclusion. I'll tell you my thoughts on this. And now the bridge has finally been repaired and the attack goes in. A final attack to take this central victory point. But the bunker will probably put a quick stop to that alongside the Panzer IV and Grenadiers. Firestorm going in, knocking out a anti tank and knocking out the M. The 30 caliber gun, King Tiger has suffered a quite lot of damage to this, but I did not care. I just wanted to push him away and knock him out. Stug probably going to knock out that M10. Sniper right in the line of fire of the King Tiger. And there again, a bit of swearing over late game and Wehrmacht. And there he goes, he leaves. The 116th Panzer Division has punched through the lowlands and will continue the counterattack of the Operation Lüttich. So. What can we learn from this? Well, attacking from numerous lanes, numerous places can be quite effective if you're Americans and catch the Wehrmacht 
nicely off guard as he did here. Certainly managed to hold all of the three victory points, but that leads us to lesson number two. Don't overextend yourself, don't try to defend what you can't hold, which was certainly the case here. He tried to hold three victory points in succession, and that's something you really have to be careful with. And this certainly ended up very badly for him, as I was able to force the attack on two of them, while of course completely ignoring this one, and of course perhaps if I had a bit more aggressive over here, I could actually have forced him out there as well, completely and perhaps screaming over. Who knows? And of course that also leads to another point about all of this, of course static emplacements are good but of course you shouldn't count on them to do everything as he did here seemingly having them knocked out and of course actually keeping infantry forces constantly flowing he actually lost a lot of infantry and he did not replace it meaning he had a very small force that could actually carry an attack and that cost him dearly in the long run as I was easily able to beat back his forces without actually suffering much in the long run. He did set up a medic station but it was way too far away from the actual battle station and of course as soon as that bridge was knocked out was in fact rendered absolutely useless. And of course I've talked about this player, what do I think about him? Well I think the trouble is he sort of mentally told himself well it's alright the other opponent has a really nasty force which I'm not supposed to win with because it's imbalanced, it's overpowered, it's cheating, relic or Nazis, what do I know? But it's a mental thing, he's basically put a block in himself saying I can't improve here, I am perfect, it's the game that's wrong. And when you hit that spot, then you really don't move any further because it's not the game, it's yourself that's holding it back, really. The mental attitude is one of the most important things in company here, so you really need to tell yourself I can fight on, I can overcome this, even if you're facing rifle span with lots of houses in which I certainly faced for a long time and I really was daunted by it, it really took a hard time for me and it took me some time to overcome it but I did overcome it, it was partly actually due to Company of Heroes Online because well Company of Heroes Online for those that haven't played it had a lot of new abilities like riflemen that could be rendered completely invisible and appear from any point and alongside engineers with flamethrowers forward barracks that could heal nearby troops popping out of nowhere and once you face that alongside strafing runs that could they were even more powerful than these here you sort of realize, well, this isn't actually too tough. And if I can actually try and beat that in Comfort Heroes Online, then this is nothing. Again, don't see it as a sort of, oh no, it's unbalanced, I can't win. See it as a challenge, see it as something to overcome. And you will in the long run overcome because you will be set on actually trying to adapt to it and trying to find its weaknesses and counter it. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did why not subscribe or tell your friends this is Imperial Dane saying the mind is a powerful weapon. Cheers!